So in the last episode, we started working on the sling, getting it ready for Mustang week. We took care of some issues with the charging system. We did a big three upgrade with Blake from KMJ Motorsports and certified rippers. So today we're going to be installing a flex fuel sensor kit. That way we can run the car easily on both 93 and E85. Let's get started. But before we install this flex fuel sensor, we should probably look and see what it does and why we might want it. The flex fuel sensor's main job is to determine how much ethanol is in the fuel that's flowing through it. As fuel passes through the sensor, it sends a zero to five volt signal to the ECU, which then determines how much extra fuel we need to add to hit our target air fuel ratio. Higher concentrations of ethanol will require more fuel to be sprayed into the cylinders to make the same power as gasoline. Now you might be wondering, why would I want to burn ethanol and more of it to make the same power that gasoline does. And Engineering Explained has a great video that I'll link down below as to why you might want to run E85 instead of 93. But to quickly sum it up, E85 has a higher knock resistance and a natural cooling effect that occurs when it burns. So what this means is we can make more power or we can make the same power even safer. So coming over here and looking at the car, you see we've got our fuel pressure regulator here for our return fuel system that we installed not long ago. Here's our return line right here. So what I'm thinking is we're gonna take uh, this line off and we will install the flex fuel sensor directly right here. We'll be able to ground it somewhere here in the engine bay. We'll be able to send power pretty easily to wherever we want that to go, as well as the signal wire over to the ECU, which is in that corner behind the firewall. Here is our OEM GM. Now don't panic. Yes, I know we're putting a GM part on a Ford. It's crazy, but we've got a GM flex fuel sensor, a little pigtail for it. We've also got our line adapters. This is from the 3 8 to a 6 a.m. That way we can easily put it on our return. We've got two of those, and then we've got a 6AN female to female. That's so we can connect it directly off of the regulator on to the return line. And with this setup, the sensor should work perfectly. We should be able to get a good ethanol reading at all times. Installing this thing is pretty simple. We're going to take this collar, slip it on there. We've got our end with the threads on. We're just going to slip that on, twist it. We'll go grab a wrench and get it nice and tight. Over here at the car, we've got the return line already off. So we're gonna put the flex fuel sensor. It's gonna thread in right there. Then we're gonna take this female to female little adapter. That'll go from the ORB fitting here on the back of the regulator to the flex fuel sensor. Of course, the flex fuel sensor, once again, will thread in there. And that finishes all of the plumbing for the fuel system to install the flex fuel sensor. So we've got our plug here for the flex fuel sensor. We went ahead and measured out a bunch of wire um, so we've got our signal wire which is white our ground which is black we're going to be grounding this in the engine bay and then we've got our power for a key on source which we're going to be running underneath the dash the white one is the longest because it's got to go through the firewall the underside of the dash to the complete other side of the car we're going to go ahead and put some nice sleeving on it make this look clean so it looks nice underneath the engine bay uh, and nice as well everywhere else in case this ever has to be removed for some reason so we're gonna go ahead and do that MS3 out sitting here on the ground. Here is our options connector. So right here, this is pin G. This is where we have our wideband sensor. We're gonna move two over and you'll see kind of that one right there in the middle where my thumb is at, that's pin M. I'll put a diagram up on the screen. That's where we're going to be putting our little pin in and then we'll be connecting it to this white wire and then we'll go ahead and plug everything in. We'll get this all tidied up, make it look nice again and be good to go. over here to tuner studio you're going to want to go up to the search bar you're going to type in flex then go to the flex fuel sensor setting you're going to go ahead and turn that on make sure it's enabled sensor port make sure that says digital switched in one the temperature input you can turn on if you want to you don't have to um, but mine just set the flex fuel and then we're going to come down here to flex fuel calibration you'll see where we said have fuel multiplier percent Make sure in the low column that that is set to 100. 
high that that is set to 163. And then timing addition, we're gonna have that set to zero and zero just because we're actually gonna have a separate uh, flex fuel timing table. Um, for fuel, there are, there's, there's the option of doing two different VE tables. It's not really necessary. Um, that's why we're just gonna use the fuel multiplier here. So we're gonna have that set to 100 and then 163. That'll take care of all the fueling, makes it super easy. That's how stock um, computer cars with flex fuel built in, like a lot of Chevy's vehicles, uh, that's how they do it. Um, it's way simpler, it gets the job done. Uh, we shouldn't have any issues there. So we're gonna go ahead and close out of this. We'll go over here to dual fuel. Go to dual fuel enable. What we're gonna do here is turn that on, set this mode to flex blend. And then the only thing we need to change here is the alternate spark table, we'll turn that on. Everything else here should uh, just stay off. And that's, so when we come over here to the ignition table, you'll see we have an ignition table three and we'll just uh, make sure that the resolution here is the same on both and then for me i just copied my table because this table is actually set up for e85 this car's been running on e85 without a flex fuel sensor purely on e85 so for me i'm going to have to make some changes i'm actually going to go back and pretty much retune the whole car um, but it'll be nice because then down the line especially with mustang week and there being a severe lack of e85 up there up north I'll be able to run 93, it won't have any problems. Okay, so as you'll see, the car is running. We've got our ethanol percentage of 75%. So our flex fuel sensor is working. Now we're just going to have to make some tune changes, which I'll handle off camera. Once you have a solid 93 uh, tune set up in your car, uh, which I imagine most of y'all already will, uh, with the settings that we've already set up, the car should run just fine on E85. From there, you know, once you have, you know, a solid ethanol percentage, you know, about 75%, which is about normal, you know, then you can uh, go into maybe adding a little bit more timing, you know, and and being able to take more advantage of that fuel. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up the flex fuel sensor install. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the heat exchanger fans that have decided to stop working. I think I know what's going on with that. Well, I was over at Blake's house. I did some testing, found out that it's not getting power. So I'm pretty certain that we've got an issue there with the factory Celine relay system that powers those fans. Uh, I did test the fans. I did give them 12 volts. They both power on. So I know that the fans are good, which is nice because they are not cheap. So knowing that the fans work, we'll go ahead and build a new harness with a new relay. We'll switch over everything to something that is easy to work on, easy to repair in the future as need be. So look forward to that uh, coming up real soon. If you guys enjoyed the video or you guys find this helpful for installing your own flex fuel sensor, drop a like down below, leave a comment. Uh, get subscribed if you're not already. We've got some really awesome Mustang Week content that's coming up in just a few weeks. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, you guys are definitely not going to want to miss it. So make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss out on all that action. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one.